Hi guys. So what's on the menu today is a slow cooked uh, beef short ribs on a bed of horseradish potato puree. It takes about three hours to cook. It is a stove top uh, prepared dish and it goes in the oven. You can actually um, use a, a pot or a pan to cook your beef short ribs and then put it into a casserole dish to put in the oven if you don't have uh, a Dutch oven. Uh, and you will need to get your beef short ribs from your butcher because they don't usually sell them at Coles or Woolies. Let's get started. Okay, so these are the ingredients that you need. So we'll start with the short ribs. You need um, 500 grams of beef short ribs with the bone in. Obviously your salt and pepper, olive oil. You want two onions diced. You want uh, four celery stalks diced as well. Four cloves of garlic minced. You want two tablespoons of the tomato paste. One bottle of red wine, a whole bottle. Um, the bottle that I got is two towns, on special from $20 to 12, so winning. Um, four cups of beef stock, two sprigs of rosemary, two bay leaves, um, one teaspoon of lemon zest, a kilo of potatoes, some cream for the potato puree and some horseradish cream. So dice your veggies up nice and fine. They don't have to be too fine because they're going to be slow cooking for quite a while. But dice everything up and then you want to grate your garlic. When you're peeling your lemon rind, I actually use a potato peeler. It comes off really easy. Then you can cut it off into little bits and that'll go into the um, ribs right before it goes into the oven. Now you wanna coat your ribs in a bit of flour. That gives it a really nice crust for when we're searing it. So just pop a bit on like that, rub it around on both sides. Make sure your hands are clean and nicely sanitized. Put a bit more in there. There we go. Okay. And then you want to get a little salt and pepper. And now these ribs are ready to sear. So get your pan really searing, and then you wanna pop your beef short ribs in. Just do them in batches if you need to. Let them sear on each side so you get a nice brown crust from that flour. I use butter again because olive oil does tend to make it stick. And make sure your, um, your oven is um, 180 degrees Celsius at this point. So you wanna take your ribs out of the pan once they're nicely crusted, not cooked, but just nicely crusted like that. And you wanna saute your veggies. So turn the pan down a little bit. You'll get a bit of a brownie look. That's just from the flavor of the, um, from the ribs, so that's fine. Saute them so they get a little bit translucent. So while that's sauteing, you wanna add your garlic that you've already minced. Wait till you smell the aroma of your garlic. Then you want to add your salt and pepper. Can't have me too much salt. Pepper. By then your veggies should start to get a little bit softer. And now you're going to add in your tomato paste. Stir that around. Now you just want to use a pinch of flour from before as well. Pop the flour in there that you had off your plate. It doesn't have to be too much. And give it a good stir. Smelling awesome. Now you're going to add your wine. So a whole bottle of your favorite red wine. This is my favorite bit. Pour that right into the pan. Love that smell. Okay. 
Then give it a little stir, getting any brown bits off the bottom. Then you're gonna add your quarter of a cup of balsamic vinegar. Drain the pot like that. Then add your herbs. So you're gonna put in your rosemary. I just wanna put it like, just like that. So you're gonna pull it out at the end anyway. And heaps of dried thyme. Now you're gonna bring this to the boil. So I'm gonna turn it back up again. The reason why we do that is to get all the acidity out of the alcohol. Now bring that to the boil. Once it's at the boil, turn it down a bit. And now you want to add your beef ribs back to the pot. Turn it all the way down, it stop bubbling shortly. And then you want to pour in beef stock. That's as much as your pan or your pot will allow. Then add the rest of your herbs. I'm going to put a bit of parsley in there. Whatever you'd like. The lemon rind that we prepared earlier. And you're also going to put in your bay leaves. Where the magic happens. Let it sit there for a little bit. Another good. Now this is going to go in the oven for two and a half hours, nearly three, depending on your oven, depending on how you like them cooked. Three hours, they'll be absolutely falling apart. Two and a half, they'll still be a little bit um, tough. It's up to how you like them cooked. Like me, your kitchen will look like this. So now's the time to clean it up. Usually my husband will do this for me, but today it is all on me. Now's the time to relax with a glass of wine. We still have work to do, but we have three hours to do it. So while our ribs are cooking, we want to boil our potatoes. Just like that. Okay, let's see how these look. It's gonna be really hot. Oh, look at that. Falling off the bone. Can we just all take a minute to appreciate how good this looks? that beautiful potatoes are ready put them in your food processor if you don't have one you can just mash them but I'm going to put them in the food processor so you're going to put probably about two tablespoons of cream the main ingredient is your horseradish cream so you want to put in again two tablespoons of that the wrong tablespoon so hold on this one works better or your salt and pepper. A little bit of garlic to already in there. Now we're going to put this on. This always gives me grief, this part. Let's see if it works. It works. And now we're going to pulse it. Oh, we know. We're going to plug it in first. And now we're going to pulse it. Dollop of the horseradish potato puree. Just like that. We want to get our ooh, big short ribs. And put a nice big short rib on that plate. Oh, look at that falling off the bone. 
Now you want to get a ladle and put a bit of your red wine sauce over it. And then a sprinkle of your parsley. And we are done. Short ribs on a bed of horseradish potato puree. Enjoy. Husband is happy.